Many years ago, a friend of mine painted me this picture, this cartoon. I have really liked it. We know, we all know people that can't be bothered with new ideas. The reality is we have to be bothered. We have all got to get into the 21st century and do it now. Most of us would love to have this 1910 Ford. It's a century old. If you could take it out on a Sunday spin around town, it would be so fun to let your neighbors gawk at you. But if you and I were going to take off for New York City, we wouldn't want anything to do with it. We would like the 21st century Ford Mustang we'd feel way more confident that we'd make it to New York and back. Or we could maybe have some fun with this 2010 Bulgatti that's worth about $2 million. It would be very, very fun. But Let's talk about where we've come. In 1910, we had 8,000 cars in the United States and approximately 140 miles of paved road. Today, 250 million automobiles and 3 million miles of paved highway. There is no way that we can double that over the next century. We have to come up with new ideas. In the last century, we've gone from 92 million to 308 million people in the United States. In the next 35 years, we're going to add another 100 million. Consider that across the world, we have to look forward and be ready and do things. Now here's 2010 technology. It's gorgeous, it's wonderful, but it'll look old and tired in a century from now, provided we get busy and improve it. Here's some 1920 houses. Now they kind of look antiquated and they're smaller, but the reality is they provided wonderful housing. And by the time the 50s roll around, we've got a little nicer houses. They're a little tiny bit bigger. And then they got them on city blocks. They're a better facility. And by the, the present century, they still are the same house as we had in the 1920s. You can see that they're bigger, they're fancier, but a block of them look just exactly the same. We've got to do some changes. Now, how were they built? We use the same tools today as we did 100 years ago. The difference is we've added some automated tools. It's sure a lot more fun to use a skill saw than a hand saw but the house is essentially the same thing. We planed the lumber, we made artificial lumber by gluing fibers of wood together, but the house is essentially the same structure as it was a century ago. Little has changed. The houses are a little bigger. They've got air conditioning built into them but essentially they're the same home. They still will burn. This fire shows a town burning. It could just as well have been the Chicago fire. It will burn and burn furiously fast. And the wood rots, the buildings rot. Many houses are shot in 50 years. Most everyone is gone in 100. And then the wind blows away those that are not rotten. 
Now let's look at the 21st century home. This monolithic dome sitting on Pensacola Beach when Hurricane Ivan came ashore. Notice the two doors underneath. Those two doors were opened and there were two in the back that opened. This provided the garage space. There was 16 foot of water went under the main floor of that house. The occupants got bored and went to bed and went to sleep. They could still hear automobiles and other heavy loads smacking into the dome, but there was nothing for them to do but sleep. This island, Pensacola Beach, was virtually destroyed. I don't mean the land was destroyed, but the buildings were destroyed, the restaurants, the places where people came to vacation. Here we have 21st century structures. These structures not only are simple and beautiful, but they save enormous amounts of energy. Energy savings are more like 70 than the 50. It's hard to believe. They're beautiful structures. They're built to last. Now the dome shown in the top here is Faith Chapel in Birmingham. Faith Chapel was just hit by a tornado. It caused some cosmetic damage, but everything around it was totally decimated. These buildings are built to last, and they're built to last four centuries, not just one. Isn't this a gorgeous looking house? Properly landscaped, the domes take on a beautiful look. It's a natural look, becomes part of the, the environment. And the home is there to last literally forever. Less energy, no worry about fire, very little worry about the tornado. Tornado hit this straight on, you probably lose some windows but you'd still be okay if you're not standing looking out the window. Another part of this 21st century technology is to build houses for our friends in the developing countries. We use somewhat similar technology to do their construction. The main thing is to keep it in that dome shape. That's nature's perfect shape. By keeping it in the shape of the egg, we get the structural strength that no other method of construction will match. These guys are using abundant material. Cement and reinforcing are available everywhere. The only thing that we've changed is we want it in the spherical shape. And it can be done by hand. These guys get paid to build it. They don't get paid a lot, but they get to eat tonight. And they build a building that will last them and their families and their grandfamilies and their great-grandfamilies. And they don't have to, every few years, be building themselves another structure. Now, we still have to make the concrete which is available around the world. You simply mix it up in the wheelbarrows and go out there and spread it out, lay it out properly, and it's available across the world. Now we have a home for a family that don't have to worry about another earthquake or a typhoon taking their house down. Notice what a gorgeous village this is in New Nelepon, Indonesia. The homes, the people, the places, it's permanent. They can build on it. And as they get more money, they'll make additions to the home. And they'll make this a place forever. 
the buildings shown here are in Hyderabad, India. Each one of those buildings has six apartments in it. You notice it has three floors, there's two apartments on each floor. Each of those apartments are 40 square meters. That's 400 square feet approximately. That's kind of small in some parts of the world, but it's luxurious where these buildings are built. We need to move into that 21st century, not only here in America, but off in the other parts of the world. The same technology is available for building school buildings, churches, all kinds of structures. These school buildings are not only safe, they're relatively inexpensive, and their energy savings are enough to pay for them. And by pay for them, we mean that if you gave them a free building or built them the dome at this market value, the energy savings over 20 years would make the monolithic domes less expensive. Now this building is designed and under construction in Oklahoma. And you can see the classrooms, the central recreation room slash cafeteria, and then the offices in the back corner. These units as modulars can be added to any school and they provide tornadoes protection for the members of the school. And because they provide tornado protection, many of them can be partially funded with FEMA money, up to 75%. This beautiful gymnasium at Italy, Texas, is the town's tornado shelter. It has 20 ton of air conditioning, which is more than adequate compared to a conventional building of the same size with 80 ton. It's also built to be there for centuries. It may need a coat of paint, may need to be washed, but the structure is there and does not have to be replaced. Faith Chapel is in Birmingham, Alabama, recently hit by a nasty tornado. It did a little bit of cosmetic damage, mostly scattering stuff around in the yard to this dome, but it literally tore the other structures, houses, etc., in the area away and destroyed them completely. The tornado is illustrated in these pictures. You can see the dome and you can see the greenery just to the north of the domes, above the domes. Now here you see the same general view, but you can see all that greenery has had the leaves stripped off the trees. And the tornado cut through there leaving a brown path destroying everything in it. The dome stood fine. Some of the outbuildings were destroyed and or roofs torn off. It's now time for all of us to consider getting into the 21st century. And that means we need to be using the technology that's available to us at this time.